We're back to the Neil Haley Show, and I guess it's time for me to have a glass of wine. Uh, we're almost Fridays here. It, it's the weekend on my recording, and uh, it's time, and I'm excited to welcome the program. My guest, Jim Lochran, he's the author of 100 Ways, 50 Ways to Love Wine More. He's getting ready to write 100 Ways next. Uh, <laughs> Adventures in Wine Appreciation. He also wrote A Beer Drinker's Guide to Knowing and enjoying fine wine. And uh, so I appreciate you coming by, Jim. Neil, it's great to be with you this evening. Absolutely. And so tell me your background and why you're writing these books. They should love to know. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I actually, uh, for many years, was in the wine import business. Mm. And uh, so I, brought, I built a portfolio and brought wines in from predominantly from Europe, from Italy and Spain and, and France, and then some from South America as well. Uh, loved it, it was a fun business, but got more into the consulting in terms of working with restaurants and writing wine lists for restaurants and so forth. And then uh, I've always loved to write, so I just started writing. I had uh, a number of students in various wine classes say, you know, my my boyfriend, my wife, my significant other really likes beer and I'd love to turn them on to wine. I just don't know how to do it. So that was really the genesis for a beer drinker's guide to knowing and enjoying fine wine. And then it started from there to a second book, this book now, right? Yes, the second book, uh, 50 Ways to Love Wine More, which I really, is subtitled Adventures in Wine Appreciation. And uh, I, I think we've got to get away from the the formality of wine, the, the BS that goes with wine too often and realize that it's just a wonderful drink. It's been part of the human experience for probably 10,000 years or more. And uh, it, it's, its greatest calling is just to give pleasure. So accept it that way. It doesn't matter if you don't know every wine region or you don't know the chemistry or you don't know all the geeky stuff about wine. If it makes you smile when you take a swallow, you're in the right path. All right. So that's that's a great point. And it's, it's so powerful what you're talking about, uh, for sure. So give us some tips for our listeners out there to get to enjoy uh, fine wine this weekend. What should we do? Especially if we don't, I mean, we have a certain budget, not a huge like. You know, sure. You know, yeah. Yeah, well, I, th I think there's two things you should do. One is look for something new, something you've never tried before. We all kind of get stuck in this rut, whether we drink, you know, Merlot or Chardonnay or Pinot Grigio or whatever it is. You see so many people just pick up the same bottle of wine all the time. And there are literally thousands of wine in the world. So you're, you're kind of denying yourself a lot of potential pleasure doing that. My second point would be to utilize the local resources that you have and in every good wine shop in the country there are going to be two or three people who really know and love wine and they are valuable they're little walking encyclopedias so if you walk into a wine shop downtown and say well look i normally drink xyz i'd like to try something a little different here's my price range what can you do for me they will, nine times out of 10, they'll hit the nail on the head and send you out with something that you're just going to be amazed at, that's going to be delicious, that's going to expand your wine horizons, and that's not going to cost any more than you're already spending. Wow. Yeah, it's not going to cost you as more as you're spending. You're basically choosing. I like the idea of mixing it up a bit. Like, uh, I, you know, and having a specific type of wine or a different experience with wine. Sure. You know, because uh, if you, you always are constantly going with one versus the other, it's going to get boring at times, right? Absolutely. Sure. And, and I love, you know, what you said is perfect, mixing it up. So if you're going to have a bunch of people over for the weekend or you're having a little party or a little backyard get together, whatever, mix it up. Get a, get a bottle or two of some kind of red wine you've never tried before. Get a bottle or two or some kind of white wine you've not tried before. You know, mix it up a little bit. Throw in a sweet wine just for kicks. And just put them all out, open them up, put the glasses there, and let your guests just go at it. 
And it's really a remarkable thing to watch people find what they prefer and enjoy the process of just trying a sip of this, a sip of that, and then say, oh, this one's really nice. You know, I'll have another sip of this one. So that's a lot of fun. It's a great way to entertain your guests uh, without having to do much work yourself. What do you hope people learn by re reading your book? I hope people learn that wine is really not a pretentious item. There's no secret sauce to it. There's no insider handshake that makes you any more, uh, any more, uh, makes it any more pleasurable for you. It, if you know next to nothing about wine, <clears throat> but you happen to drink something that really pleases your palate, that's the best anyone can hope for. So just relax. It's just grape juice after all. You know, this is not rocket science. It's grape juice, kids. So, you know, just go out and look at it that way and uh, be open and don't be afraid to try things and take suggestions from people who think they know something or who do know something and see what happens, see what comes of it. Let it be an exploration for you. Definitely. Definitely explore and enjoy. And it's the best relaxing thing to do on the weekends, you'll say, is drink wine, right? Yeah, absolutely. Or, or during the week or whenever, sure. And whenever. And it, and it health benefits as well, right? Well, in, uh, yeah, in, in controlled quantities, it, it has uh, supposedly has some pretty good health benefits. Uh, another interesting little tidbit is that for thousands of years, wine was probably uh, the, the number one or two most prevalent medicine in the world. You know, think about it. Before yeah. antibiotics were invented, the main medicines in all of human existence were honey and wine. Wow. Okay. So, you know, think about all the ways either or both of those can be used. And that really was the biggest pharmacopoeia uh, that people had. All right. So best place people can purchase your books or is go where? Well, the easiest place is go to Amazon. Go to Amazon, look for 50 Ways to Love Wine More. Uh, if you uh, have a bookstore, a local bookstore that you really uh, want to support, then go there and ask them uh, to get the book. If they carry it, you're in luck. If they don't, they can certainly order it through their normal channel. So it's no problem. Or you can always visit me at uh, www.jimlochran.com. So it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And uh, your ultimate goal, are you going to write some more wine books? I am. In fact, I'm writing one right now. And you'll like this, Neil. It's a fiction, fiction book. It's kind of a genre. It's kind of a uh, kind of a thriller, mystery, crime uh, scenario revolving around wine. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Do Think Sideways meets Elmore Leonard kind of thing. You want to make it a movie or someday? Is that a goal? Well, that, author? you know. I'm easy to get along with. <laughs> That's good. All right, Jim, we appreciate you stopping by and everyone have a glass of wine. Uh, yes, please. I know we'll be hearing this on Monday, the show, uh, but everyone have a glass of wine and, uh, and cheers. And then play this uh, episode, especially when they're looking at celebrating. So appreciate you, Jim. My pleasure. Great to talk with you tonight. All right. You're listening and watching the Neil Haley show. We'll be back in just a moment.